In the name of God, the great grower, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Last Thursday was a feria day at our midday healing Eucharist, which means we didn't remember a saint of the church or celebrate a feast day. Instead, the gospel according to Matthew conveyed Jesus speaking to us about reconciliation. So no pun intended, but thanks to the Holy Spirit, I think Thursday dovetails perfectly with our Sunday readings. I'll explain in a moment. First, I'm sure you've noticed that we are in the green growing season of ordinary time. And here, ordinary doesn't mean boring or let's not go to church because nothing special is happening. <laughs> ordinary means ordered, day by day, quotidian, and it's two thirds of our liturgical year. We are green a lot of the time. There must be something critically important about this green time when it doesn't really seem like much is happening, but under the surface where God sees, a lot is going on. And that's the beauty of this season. Joan Chittister says that it is what we do routinely, not what we do rarely, that defines us as Christians. The pageantry of our holiest days are behind us this year. So Joan says now is the time to ask, are we taking Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost seriously? For this is the time when the meanings of the other seasons bear fruit. Ordinary time is growing time. And now that we're in summer, it's a time to rest and to grow. So in keeping with this growth theme, of course today we hear of Jesus using imagery of a lavish, sower of seeds that grow into a harvest and a giant shrub that grows from the tiniest of seeds that all the birds of the air can make their nest homes there. Do you think Jesus is calling you to some sort of action, finding your sun hat, searching out the best soil to plant more mustard seeds? Mm, actions being called for, but it is not outward. This is the time when the other seasons bear fruit within us. Ordinary time is a growing and changing time for our inner selves. And that's why Thursday's message of reconciliation dovetails with today's call to see not as humans see, but as God sees. So here's my thought on this. We all know that our brains have evolved as pattern matchers, and this works well for us. It's our survival mechanism. It keeps us alive. We know which plants not to touch and which reptiles to run away from. So it's okay to always see poison oak and rattlers through purely human eyes because they're never going to change but sometimes our pattern matching extends too far and we conflate things that never change with things that are always changing, like people. Hmm. For example, maybe someone was bad to you in the past and you've labeled them in your mind as fill in the blank. And even though you may have called someone a turnip, or a viper, people are not this. Unlike the dangers of the natural world, through the work of the Holy Spirit, people do change. And we must remember that God is always working to bring even the most broken people into their fullest humanity. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone re-enters an abusive relationship but simply to revisit how we see people, to look inside and to check on those labels that we have placed over time. Labels are static, but people are not. This makes labels a form of blindness. 
they trick us into thinking that we know everything about a person when clearly that's impossible. So what about grudges? They're just old, enduring labels. I wonder if you have any moldy grudges hanging on inside of you right now. I know that I have carried many. In this green, ordinary time, looking beyond the tricks of labels is good, growing work. By widening our eyes to recognize the growth in others, we grow ourselves and we can recognize God at work. Now, when I taught sixth grade religion at an Episcopal school, we covered all the covenants of the Old and New Testament in one year, and it was a lot. But my favorite unit was the Old Testament Davidic covenant because of what it meant to the students. Now, it was not because of the covenant's connection to God's saving work through Jesus Christ in our world, which is why we're all here, but because of that first Samuel passage that we heard today, it was relevant to their 12-year-old lives. And so by heart they knew, for the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. I'm sure they forgot everything else I taught them, which was okay, because they would hear it again, of course. But this unit was personal because they were just starting to grapple with labeling. We remember, right? How comforting and refreshing to be taught that God looks directly into our true selves and calls us to see others in the same way, that God's kingdom is different from what the world tells us. We're seeing how God sees as another way of saying to love as God loves. I think we all need to memorize this passage. So Thursday and today come together when we realize that reconciliation of our relationships gives us new eyes. Eyes that see that we are one great imperfect family. But through God's gift of Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost, we have a way forward we just have to see it. So we sit with that during our green growing time and we ponder how we will see on the path ahead in our lives because that path is where we join God's new creation. And it's where we claim our nest in the great kingdom of heaven. And it just starts with our normal everyday life. So rest, go inside, peel off labels and grow. Who knows? Your turnip may turn into a rose. Your viper into a dove. Imagine the healings and the blessings as these ordinary times make us all more fully human as God created us to be. Amen.